five, four, three, two, one. Hello everybody, I'm Dear Myrtle, your friend in genealogy, and welcome to Wacky Wednesday, the Widow Darlington. And joining us this evening is my very, 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 very distant cousin, Madame Sabatini. Cousin Russ, Dear Myrtle has told me that you have an 1812 uh, conundrum of documents to deal with, and so we I, shall look at them tonight. Cool. Yeah, I, I uh, was tracking down my 1812 shaky leave hints mm -hmm. and ended up with uh, four hits that were War of 1812, and I remembered that... Uh, PreserveThePension.org has a project to get those records digitized, and I, since I think they're in the D's or E's, I, I mm -hmm. thought I would see if my Darlington hint would lead me to a document, and it did. You, you got one, so I'm showing it right here on the screen. Let me scroll up to the top of the page. And it says, uh, well, I think we need to go actually one page earlier than this. And another page earlier. And another page earlier. In other words, this is the actual document. Um, and it has to do with Jane Darlington. Now, the second image, uh, they'll have moved this aside. Do you know what this is? Looks like a, a seal. It's part of the actual seal. Yep. And that at that time, she was 58 years old, still a resident of Chester County, Pennsylvania, as you knew. And she's affirming that she is the widow of Amos Darlington. Now, did you know? You already knew about Jane and Amos from your Quaker records research, correct? That, that is correct. They are, are Jane and Amos are my third great-grandparents. Pretty darn cool. Well, this document um, is Jane's application where she is stating that she's a widow of Amos who was a private in Captain somebody or other in the Second Regiment of the Pennsylvania Militia commanded by Colonel Black. Um, I think you have something that you found on Ancestry.com. Right now we're looking at Fold 3. Do you want to share your Ancestry.com screen? Where I, it shows his service. I will do that. And I believe it should be coming on my screen right now. Yes, it is. It's it's Amos uh, Darlington, the the Second Regiment Infantry, and I'm not sure how you pronounce it's that. Box. It's B A. Yeah, that's what I would say. Box Infantry Militia. He was a private uh, in that infantry. Now I had missed. I had added an L in there, Colonel Black. Um, but you'll see it's part of a National Archives microfilm collection, and the, the publication number is 602. Now, um, very good. All right, let's look a little bit in more. What you've got is a transcription of the index, and then what I'm showing, um, it, the great Madame Sabatini, is the actual Fold 3 um, application for uh, we don't know what some maybe it's bounty land maybe it's pension we're going to find out but anyway she goes through in this affidavit stipulating that she was married to Amos Darlington on the 24th of January 1822 so apparently she married this fellow after the war of 1812 but she's now his widow. She's signing it the 29th of November, 1853. And there is her signature clearly different from the handwriting up above. So it must have been an attorney or somebody that filled that other part out. And what she, did, what she wants is bounty land, right? Some dates around uh, what I know is that Amos was born about uh, 1790, and he died about 1856. Mm -hmm. Jane Mercer, his wife, was born about 1800. 
Uh, I don't have a death date, but I had found the family in the 1850 uh, U.S. Census, where I expected to find them. Mm -hmm. Now, I made a mistake in reading it that I can now see um, where a little more clearly. The date that they have, uh, that she has reported, is that her husband died in 1853, which is in the ballpark, especially when you're dealing with the way the Quakers reported things. It's the, you know, the 11th month and the 23rd day, whatever it is. Um, but she's making an application, and she's saying here that she further declares that her said husband heretofore made application for bounty land under the Act of September 28, 1850 and obtained a land warrant for 40 acres, which, which he legally disposed of and cannot now be returned. She makes this declaration for the purpose of attaining the additional bounty land to which she may be entitled approved uh, the third day of March 1855. Now that reflects a change in the law. And are you familiar with the law um, of who could um, who is eligible for a pension? I I this is the first time I've looked at this kind of record, and I I've seen, but I haven't done any detailed research on bounty land. So this will be. I know we've talked about it a couple times, but I've not. Uh, had a chance to get into the detail. Well, our good friend, the legal genealogist, explains that um, under the 1871 law, to be eligible, a survivor had to be 60 days service and honorably discharged, and the widow could collect if they married before the 17th of February 1815. Now, that isn't the law that that she's applying under. Um, let me pull this up. Um, there's a PDF file that's available from the um, National Archives itself and they're talking about bounty land warrants for a number of um, time periods. In fact, when you go to um, order up the files, remember Rats when we... Yep. You and Dear Myrtle and I and your wife and Mr. Myrtle, it was quite a crowd. We went into the National Archives and on once you sign in and then there behind that's the information desk and then beyond that is a room where you can order files or go even farther into the National Archives and look at microfilm. But in the part where you can order files, there's all kinds of helpful guide sheets. They're different colors and this is what they printed up. It was revised in 2010. So when we get down to, um, this is Revolutionary War, let's get down to War of 1812. There were um, acts of 1811 and 1812 and, and veterans could, I don't know if you can see this, let yep. me pull this yep. in. Yep. Well it helps if I put the camera on. There were different benefits um, and these were different laws that were passed by Congress in 1842, 1850, 52, and 55. And, um, and that's the initial bounty land, meaning that the federal government of the United States didn't have enough money to recompense the soldiers for their um, injuries, service, etc. But we had a great deal of land in the confines of the United States. There's another interesting sentence here and it says that many of the, I can't get this right, many of the War of 1812 bounty records were interfiled with the pension files. Uh, that makes sense, doesn't it? Yep. If a soldier had qualified for pension, his widow or he may be entitled to bounty land. It just depends on which point in the in those in that category of years, 1842 through 1855, where things could um, change for uh, each soldier as to what he qualified for. Now there are two indexes that the National Archives cites. The first one is 
um, 14 roles that are alphabetical by new, by the warrant number, which is kind of a problem uh, because you'd already have to, I mean, you want to look up by an ancestor name. Uh, these are only by the number of the warrant that was granted, but for Michigan, Illinois, Louisiana, and the part of Louisiana that's now in Arkansas. They also have another index, which is an index to the pension application files. It's larger, and luckily that is alphabetical by surname. And it's, it's a series that is based on service between the 1812 and 1815. Unfortunately, it also includes some actions with the Indians during that same war time period. And uh, the filing information for 1812, 1850, and 1855 laws for Bounty Land are there. And I think that the um, thing to, have you shared the link uh, to this PDF file with the community, Cousin Russ? Uh, uh, not yet, but I will. <laughs> okay. Um, I think it's important to understand that there are some indexes available. Um, you just happen to go searching at um, at Ancestry.com because of the work that you're doing, just zeroing down on every single military record index. I think that Dear Myrtle took an interesting um, take on this by going directly to Fold3 and, and searching uh, for additional information. And you had this, uh, you brought this to our attention as well. Look at this next document. Can you talk to me a little bit about this document or have you had any chance to review it? I haven't had a chance to review it, uh, but I do, right at the top of that page, mm -hmm. uh, just point out that the Birmingham Monthly Meeting is where their marriage was where they applied for marriage and mm -hmm. those records are also online which is and very monthly, interesting very interesting now that uh, Quaker records have come forth a lot of people who are not familiar with the Quaker uh, way of record keeping and the way they refer to their um, the um, congregations that they'd have they called the monthly meetings um, and they didn't always have an official home. <gasps> David Hoops. Yep. yep. Abner Hoops. Those are yep. Hoops. Are, Hoops are Dear Myrtle's people. Yeah. Hmm. And don't. And you'll see Yar uh, Yarnell, mm -hmm. and you'll see several other names that we share. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what you've got here is they didn't tear out the pages from the monthly meeting minutes. Somebody has transcribed all of this, and um, this is showing that um, they went through uh, the marriage process for Quakers, which involved a notice to the monthly meeting, and then people would... Um, have the opportunity to say yay or nay if they knew or did uh, if they didn't know or they did know of something that would impede the viability of a marriage from a from a um, religious slash legal standpoint. Um, th something interesting too. This part um, talks about where Amos Darling is from. He's from West Goshen. In Pennsylvania, and that he is the son of Amos Darlington of the same place. So, um, when looking at those pension files, we're going to have to determine if we're dealing with Amos the father or Amos Darlington Jr. I notice yeah. here yeah, they had to add Jr. They added it. Uh -huh. Okay, and then, oh, I love these this document um, and this is actually a transcription from the monthly meeting at Birmingham um, and Jane Mercer daughter of Jesse Mercer of the township of Weston West, West Town. Town okay in the county and state for aforesaid and Elizabeth his wife having disclosed their intention of marriage meaning that the, the couple had disclosed their intention of marriage um, 
Okay. So they wanted the um, members of the Quaker organization to know of their intention. And let's make this slightly smaller just for ease of, of sliding down through this. <laughs> My little mouse. Okay, I'll go to the next document. Because um, she, oh, and here it says she's going to assume the name of her husband. Alrighty. And then there's a signature, a series of signatures. Talk to me about those series of signatures. Do any of those names ring a bell? Uh, many, many of them. Sharpless, and and in, on this document is spelled mm -hmm. with one S. Many times you'll see two. You'll see a bunch of Darlington, uh, mm -hmm. Rachel, David, uh, and I think if you go down a little bit further, you might find a painter. Uh, mm -hmm. There's towns, and these are all Chester County names. And that you're aware of. That the names that I grew up with, and in fact, oh. there's a Sharpless book. There's a three volume, about 1,200 pages worth of documentation of a, a, a an authored book on mm -hmm. the Sharpless family in Chester County. So those are very all very familiar names to me. And it's obvious that this is a transcription because the handwriting is the same. Exactly the same. Yep. Uh, all right. So let's go on over here. Then, there's, paint, there's the painters that I've yes, mentioned. Yes. Mm -hmm. The webs. Boy, there's a lot of Darlingtons around there. Yep. Hodgson's, etc. And that this was signed by Caleb S. Cope, recorder, Cope. recorder of Birmingham Monthly Meeting. Uh, just a, a, side, a side issue on Cope. Cope was a historian in, in uh, Chester County, and many books have been written by uh, Cope, and another person uh, wrote a lot of historical documents from Chester County. Hmm. So anyway, he says, I hereby certify that this is a true copy, with two Ps, of the marriage between Amos... Jane Darlington, and there's no and, as recorded in the records of the monthly meeting. And the date of this is um, the fourth month, ninth day, 1857? Seven. Yep. Okay. All right. I don't know if there's another document. Oh, this is the, like, the jacket for it. Now, th there's that... Um, reddish pink, I think it was red, but it's faded out, thread that was used through those two grommets to keep all these papers together. This is what they did before they had ACO binders. <laughs> they hadn't printed <laughs> them yet. <laughs> okay, so it says, Declaration of Jane Darlington, widow of Amos, deceased, late, and then it talks about um, what unit he was in. And there is an attorney who's who's submitting this. So, very interesting. And I think that's the end. And what we've been doing is, no, there's more. Um, this is, um, looks like Amos Darlington. And this is Amos's application. So first we had his widow's. And now we have, remember his widow said that her husband had already applied for bounty lands. So now we have Amos's uh, application and that he served for three months. And that does look like a, a signature there. Okay. One of those documents that you pointed out earlier, and I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Because here is the page out of the document, and uh, you will see the dates that he served. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's and this is from the paymaster of the militia, the sum of six dollars in part of our pay for the mm -hmm. tour of duty commencing five the fifth day of September and ending the fifth day of sem September uh, ne December uh, 1814 now 
I believe that you can see this, and uh, if not, let me zoom in a, a little bit further, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. what you will see is, oops, I lost it. <laughs> to, that happens. I, this, I, there we go. There's Yearsly on the other page, so that looks pretty interesting yeah, for me. Might, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, let me go back. Come on. There we go. This is a Darlington, but a different Darlington, mm -hmm. because my guy is down here. As a private, okay. As a private, you will see Painter as a, yes. another sergeant, and Painter was another one of those names that was in that wedding uh, document oh, yes. with all mm -hmm. the names One of the it. witnesses, yeah. And you'll see Britain, which is, this is all Chester County names that I know. Um, mm -hmm. I, there's Worthington. And there's, there's this, uh, Worthington. Now, I know at the, about this time there was a Worthington living in this area, but mm -hmm. it's not my line. These guys no, okay. are my line, but that one is not. But I have, <laughs> if, if I get a chance, I'm going to, I believe I know where he's going to be, but he's if it's, if it's who I think it is, he was also a Quaker. Okay, and what you're looking at, um, cousin Russ, are pages from something known as the Pennsylvania Archives. It's not a building that we're talking about. It's a collection of 138 volumes. There are about um, eight inches tall and about four inches wide and about anywhere from two to four inches thick and that that collection is available at Google Books hopefully you've got the link there um, it's also they say that the published Pennsylvania Archives series through 1902 um, is searchable um, online at um, Ancestry.com, but let me talk with you just a little bit more about why the published Pennsylvania Archives books are considered pretty reliable. Uh, Cousin Russ, you may know that um, even the National Society Daughters of the American Revolution and the 1812 uh, lineage organizations approve the Pennsylvania Archives as a source even though they're considered a second um, copy. What happened in 1820 was the uh, Secretary of State who was responsible for archiving all of these old muster rolls and things like that that uh, from the colonial time period to his point in time, 1820, that he realized that they were mostly in loose format, they were um, deteriorating, um, and so they made a determination that they would publish a series of books by going through these, and, and what you'll frequently find are muster rolls, um, you'll find oaths of allegiance, um, things along that line and so the page that you showed me looks exactly like it's from the published Pennsylvania Archive series. Hopefully you can share those two links they're in, with they're, everybody. They're in the community. Perfect, okay. They, um, also um, I should mention a little bit and then I want to go look at Bureau of Land Management and talk to you. Um, Ancestry.com also has the War of 1812 Service Record Index. It, that's how you found, that's the database you were using when you found yes. the uh, Darlington to begin with. Yes. There's also a Pension Applications File Index if they were applied for and granted. Um, and then there's some uh, miscellaneous papers. I don't know which NARA. National Archives record group that is without uh, getting into more detail. But what I'd like to do is actually take you over to the Bureau of Land Management website for this reason. We know that if there is bounty land it's possible that the Bureau of Land Management may have documents concerning that. Now let me go forward with this. Let's see. And I'm wondering if you, uh, have you found a picture of Amos's headstone? 
because I know that he yep. was buried where oh you want to share that with people while I'm looking I, for I am doing that right now let me get the screen okay. up I, actually he's not where I thought he was but oh, I okay. found him and this is Isaac the one that I got my hint on and there's a mm -hmm. picture of him in the right place it's not the same same, same cemetery at, mm -hmm. at Burlington as, mm -hmm. as Birmingham but mm -hmm. there he is, and he was a congressman, which I didn't know until mm -hmm. I looked at my database, because I haven't looked at him for a long time, but he was elected to represent Pennsylvania's 2nd District for the United States House of Representatives, serving from 1817 17 to 1819. He also okay. started as a uh, court judge, but that was uh, Isaac... So who um, is Isaac when we've been talking about Amos? Was he, he just somebody that came up in the hit list? He was the one that, his hint is the one that got me to that church record that you shared with all mm -hmm. the names on it. His name is on that list, which provided the hint to me, and that's where I found it. And then I kept shaking my head and uh, contacted you mm -hmm. and then it dawned on me that I was looking at his name as part of a people supporting the marriage of Amos and, and uh, Jane. Jane and I didn't know that and, until I started looking at uh, like I'm supposed to do look at what you're <laughs> looking at and I, but the hint brought me to Isaac but the hint uh, took me to this uh, record that where we've been talking about the marriage record Okay, well, let me talk to you about where to go next. Um, the Bureau of Land Management gives you the opportunity to search for documents, and I just searched for anywhere. I didn't want to specify which state, and I just searched for last name and first name, and that's where I came up with this particular um, patent detail. This is the image, but it includes Amos and Jane Darlington, and also somebody named um, Eric MacArthur, who's who doesn't have to be a relative. Most likely is not. Now let me zoom in so that you can see this tiny little letter here, next to the W or next to Darlington Amos is a little letter W. That means he was the one that got the original warrant. The patentees are are both Jane and Eric MacArthur. So it's entirely possible that this was some of his original land. Now it's saying Tap Captain Taylor's company and that it was under the Script Act, that's a warrant, of 1855 and that he got 125 acres. Thank heavens it wasn't meets and bounds. It was actually, <laughs> there's actually a land description in Michigan where it was proved out on the Toledo Strip. And I do so like that, um, do so wish that um, the mapping worked a little bit more it, readily. Actually, actually, click on the first link. It says map. Click on there. You'll find it's right next to a state park. State okay. Park should be on the left, if I remember correctly. Yeah, let's there, put all these. It's a national in. forest. It's starting to come in now. Okay. Oh yeah, Hiawatha National Park. Yep. Yep. So they've got this for us. So they have updated. For the longest time, map data wasn't available, even though they gave you the township and range and the the principal meridian, etc. Um, that's another class on um, yeah. how to plot that. I, I yeah. zoomed out on that page so that I could see where it was, and mm -hmm. uh, it's a new territory for me because I didn't know that we had people there. But now mm -hmm. I know why he would be up there if I find him in a record. Okay. Up, up well, there. let me talk with you about this. Here's the final patent. Um, this is. Jane Darlington, widow of Amos. So Amos didn't actually go there to get this property. He was the one that made it possible because of his service, but she had the uh, an, 
and it mentions his service in the War of 1812. And then here is the legal description with all the aliquots and all that crazy stuff. Now, related documents is another option here. Now, if you if you ask for a certified copy, they just give you another copy of this. They don't give you the paperwork behind it or the actual warrant, which is absolutely beautiful. I'll show you one in a bit. When it says related documents on this tab, these people are ones that had, um, these are the different accession numbers or land entry numbers. And you'll see um, that if you were to plot this out, these are his neighbors. Yep. And when you're talking that this was 120 or 125 acres, the neighbors are, <laughs> they could be a little ways away, but those are your nearest neighbors. And you can literally take all of these um, and plot them out and figure out who has, you know, who's on the north, south, east, and west part um, adjoining the Darlington property. But what I want to well, show now you... I see why uh, MacArthur is there yes. in the next property. Oh, yes. Interesting. Well, okay. But let me talk with you about a blog post my very distant cousin, Dear Myrtle, uh, created. Because, as you know, she has been to the National Archives. In fact, you two have looked together at other types of land records, but you can literally go there. Where the heck is that link on this list? There's so many things to choose from here. I can't find... Can you find Dear Myrtle's link? Oh, here it is. All right. Let me pull this up. Occasionally, my very distant cousin does a pretty darn good job of it. Look at this bounty land record. That was the original warrant for one of her husband, Mr. Mertz, ancestor. This happens to be for um, at War of 1812 as well. You can barely see that there. This is outlined in red with a blue border, only to point out to you that there's a lot of names behind there and it says 1812, and that it's 120 acres. So that she added to this. But the colorful um, 120 here, the blue stamp, this blue bounty land, and the background part where you can occasionally see um, the, and you can see all the engravings of George Washington, etc. That is the document that you can pull up by going in person and ordering up this bounty land warrant file. Now this is the box that it comes in and this is a little divider that dear Myrtle put in the box when she sounds like she swallowed a spider but I don't know why. Anyway, <laughs> that's, that's to keep track of the fact that that's where she's going to need to replace these folded papers that included this very thin linen document. And do, as dear Myrtle does, um, take a, a picture, uh, you know, of the Hollinger box label. That's going to help you. The bounty land warrants for the Act of 1855, where a person got 120 acres, are in one area of the National Archives, and they're filed numerically. So you have to go back to the Bureau of Land Management to get this number so it can be pulled up. Uh, they can't, uh, you can't, <laughs> in fact, George even said, you don't have to put the person's name on it. I just need that number. Well, I still put the name on it. Uh, I actually print out those land patent details. That would be this one page. I click the printer friendly and I this I taught dear Myrtle to do this so that she would have the document number so she could order it. And then um, that's how she pulled it up. Now let me show you the back of the warrant. Because you want to take a digital picture of this. This is pretty cool to have it. 
What I would take with me is print what I have on my screen right now, which is what you take. And mm -hmm. when I did it before, I printed that and said, here, go find it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. So sometimes you can have an entire list of people. This one just has one person received of Isaac, uh, the mother, etc. What they do on the back of these warrants, if the person on the front who's entitled to the 120 acres, or however much it is, doesn't want to be going traveling out west because they're elderly, they're infirm, etc., they can assign this to someone else. And there were certainly land speculators who bought these up for pennies on the dollar and sold them higher um, from uh, from just such uh, invalid or um, elderly widow type people and, and you want to get a copy of the front and the back this is actually something that's because of the seal it's pressed into the document but when you copy it or take your digital copy you can certainly just barely pull this part to take a picture. You can't put it under glass or anything because it's just too fragile and you're not supposed to add more creases. But basically what Dear Myrtle has provided is information on how to get to the copy of this. Now in the case of um, Mr. Mert, uh, his ancestor never did prove up the 120 acres himself he assigned it to somebody else and that may or may not be true uh, you're going to find out more when you see the actual document um, also remember it's a good idea to take a picture of the Hollinger box label then take a picture of the front and back of the document and then take another picture of the Hollinger box label so you bookended uh, and know where the full contents of that land warrant uh, file um, it begins and ends. Does that make sense, Cousin Russ? You're muted, dear. I do the same thing on cemeteries. I take the picture <laughs> going in and take it going out because uh, I may be going to another record or another cemetery. Okay. Uh, that makes perfect sense because you, if, if you're hitting all the cemeteries, yes. That makes, you know, one tombstone looks like another. Right, I don't know why we have the Jenny webinars thing there. All right, let me pull up uh, the other land record. Uh, remember, there were apparently two applications, one that the um, soldier made for, I think, 40 acres, and one that the widow made. Uh, let me pull this up. Here we go. I just have to click on it, pull it over. There we go. Uh, that's the one we already have. Well, we could actually do a search and just pray that their search engine isn't slow. We'll change it to any state and we'll type in Darlington and then tab down to Amos. Oh, great. I must have pressed something. Let's go back. Yes, it's an error. Okay, any state, any county, and now we'll type Amos. I think I pressed enter instead of the shift on the right side. Now, of course, in the olden days, to look up those final patents, you had to know the township range, the principal meridian, the section number. Well, if you knew that, then, it, I mean, that's how it was filed in the old books. We can search for both patentees the ones that proved it up, and the warranties, the ones who received the bounty land warrant document, the script from the federal government entitling that soldier or his widow um, to land. It does take a while. Okay, so now you see we had previously looked at this second one that included all three individuals. Let's go look at this one, where it's just Amos and a person named Martin um, Lockwood. 
apparently this one is in Iowa. It was uh, filed or approved 6-1-1853, and let's go look at it. Clinton, Iowa. Okay, and you could do the map. There's the patent image coming up now. Okay, so he got 46.984. Oh, that was the warrant number, and there's his 40 acres. And she had referred to that 40 acres, hadn't she? Yes, she did. There's your legal land. And then let's see who the neighbors are. Hmm. Okay, here's Amos, and those are his neighbors. Um, so it looks like he is the warranty. I don't know if you can see the little W, but the person who actually got the final patent for the land was Martin D. Lockwood. So you'll want to then go through the process that Dear Myrtle um, outlined right here in her blog post. Would you put this link to the community? Yeah, yes, I did. Okay. Okay, she starts with, okay, Main Screen of Bureau of Land Management, do the search, which we did, but uh, we, luckily I found the links. We didn't have to wait. I imagine everybody's looking up Darlington that's watching. Um, then we found the information. That's the final patent. And in order to get, uh, this is where you find out about the neighbors. And by printing out the uh, land patent details, that's how you can order up using the document number. And they need to know which state and land office. And then they can pull up the, the Hollinger box. And you can go through, the, through these. And by the way, I recommend that you look through the whole um, batch of them because sometimes it's like somebody took half of them out and and reversed them and put them back in and so you think that the document isn't there or the documents and they're folded and may have one sheet it depends on what type of land record um, if they're out of order it is not for you as a researcher to put them back in order although I will if it's just one or two but technically speaking the National Archives needs you to bring this to the reference desk this is in the textual reading room on the second floor and tell them these are out of order that's how I received it I was able to find the document I needed but they are responsible before returning it to the stacks to get them back in order and then that will be your final result okay so we got some more thinking to do about this um, land uh, about this record of military service that you were doing based on your ancestors. Uh, um, before you change that, uh, oh, okay. the, the one thing that I remember when we went to the archives, the, the critical thing to help the person that was helping us was the date. Mm -hmm. Yes, they need to know the law that right. was in effect. And because where the, the documents yeah. were filed. So do you see this part here? I don't know if you can see yeah. that very well. I'll zoom in. There, it's a lot clearer there, isn't it? Yep. Let but me that's, pull this that's up the so key. everybody can see it. These yeah, two things. The yep. Um, the date uh, is the authority, the date of the authority, or it might be the issue date, um, 1860. Uh, I think in um, Homestead, it has something to do with 19-something. The year 19-something means they file them differently than before that. Right, right. I think that's the, num the date George wanted was the issue date. Yep. So maybe we should move this over to include that. <laughs> okay. But having printed all this out, you're good to go. That's what I did, and, and I didn't have to think about it. I said, here, here's what I printed. <laughs> That's good. That's good, because uh, you can't just go there and say, like everything you have on the Darlingtons of Pennsylvania, it becomes a bit problematic. 
Okay, Cousin Russ, are we getting any comments or questions from the community before we go on? I can't hear you. There's been some issues with the Hangout, but I think that oh, okay. nothing we can do about it now. The okay. other, one other thing that I thought was interesting and something that I normally do mm -hmm. is uh, I went to the uh, wiki on family search and okay. to see what what I could find on there and I'm going to put the link into the uh, into our chat and okay. the community uh, if you want to bring it up come on okay I'll go find it that way Here, here here's the link wow okay great so, so there's there's the link uh, that's the 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 Family Search Wiki on mm -hmm. Pennsylvania and the War of 1812. Okay. Uh, it was. It's just something that I do to to have an understanding of what. Uh, first of all, I would look at the War of 1812, and then specifically Pennsylvania in the War of 1812. Mm-hmm. That's the okay. use of, of, of wikis, and there's pension records and what's available with a bunch of links. Okay, so there is a uh, General Society of War of 1812, their membership through 1899, although I know a lot of people have entered since then. The compiled service records, hmm, okay. Pension records, state records, they don't have the um, published Pennsylvania archives, do they, in their state records, and they should have that. In fact, we could go and add to it if I would log in under, by clicking here, edit this page, and then go down and add the link to Google Books. Uh, and of course, I didn't have the camera on um, share screen, so let me go do all that part again. I, you know, I just I was scared sharing the screen when, while right. you were talking. Oh, good. I'm glad one of us has got their act together here. You can see that there are family traits between me and dear Myrtle, and that she will forget to do that and to change the camera view. Okay. Um, let's ask people in the community if they have any um, um, thoughts that they may have people who served in the um, War of 1812. See if we can deal with that a little bit. I haven't, there's been no questions come in okay. about that uh, yet. Okay. Um, another thing that's not listed here as a resource um, under it indexes is something uh, by Virgil White. Let's see, I don't see it at all. Important national and international sources. Okay, uh, Cousin Russ, if you could give the uh, members of the community that um, National Historical Publishing Company, it starts with Virgil D. White, he's the author, or actually the indexer, index to 18, uh, War of 1812 pension and bounty land warrant files. I three volumes. Now that's something that they have at the National Archives. I've seen it also um, um, at the Family History Library. And of course you can use Google Books. Um, that may be something very useful to you. Um, let me show you this collection. There's a collection of description. Um, we were looking at application, haven't looked yet, uh, index to War of 1812 Pension Application Files, 102 rolls of microfilm. And it's the face of the envelope, or the they call it an envelope, it's really kind of folded up, or they kind of have a, like a little jacket around it. Um, it really isn't much thicker rest than uh, regular papers within it. Um, and that is the a, a nice large collection. It's publication number M313. Those are the applications. Um, and let's see what else we need. Okay, and so Fold3 does have that on its website. So go to, I mean, this is the information about it. And as you scroll down, You'll see in the olden days, you'd have to get 
microfilm roll 23 if the surname appeared between the letters C-R-A-W and C-U-M versus C-U-N. Okay. Um, so Randy, Randy uh, says, I'm waiting for files to appear here in Fold 3. <laughs> Might help uh, with one of his uh, puzzles. And I have another comment from Cindy Bray, who says, Sir, great-grandfather served his widow, apparently sold the bounty land. It's mentioned in the pension file. Okay, and th remember that they're frequently interfiled uh, right. because it's the same uh, process. And why, why go through the process again to prove that a fellow... Um, uh, did serve. Okay, here is the direct link to search for just the 1812 pension files and these are the ones that are described as being part of this record group. So you don't have to look at the 102 roles. This is the miracle of the internet and we're really glad that they're working on um, um, digitizing. Shall we bring up the um, fact that Fold3 says that they are 52% complete? 52% complete? Wow. wow. I can't believe that. Um, let's see. There's another. Oh, preserve the pensions. Let me go find that link. How's our time, Cousin Russ? Here we are. Preserve the Eight pensions. Minutes. All righty. Okay. And here they say that uh, they've raised 37% of the money needed. Um, let's talk a little bit about preserving the pensions, this War of 1812 um, digitization project. Um, they estimate that it's about uh, 7.2 million pages, and Ancestry is doing a matching grant. I recall that Dear Myrtle told me she was so proud of Mr. Mert because he uh, encouraged his local genealogy society to raise money. So and then uh, so the members donated, and then that local um, Fairfax Genealogical Society in Virginia matched. I think it was about twelve hundred dollars. So then that became $2,400, and then when Ancestry matches it, that's, what is 2 times 24? $4,800. That's a lot of documents. Um, very, very cool. So uh, we would like you to consider donating to that, maybe through your society. Maybe you can be the one, Cousin Russ, in your society, your local society, to say, hey, guys, let's pass the hat. And then let's have our society dues that, that are accumulating for years match that and then s send a nice big check off to the Federation of Genealogical Societies. This um, 1812 Pension Digitization Project is sponsored by the Federation of Genealogical Societies. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's a good way to go because, mm -hmm. you know, there are organizations like you mentioned, Ancestry, doubling. So uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the donation to Fairfax then uh, went to, to the Federation, which got mm -hmm. doubled, and then it got mm -hmm. doubled again by Ancestry. It was pretty darn good. Now, these are the folks that you know of for sure, and, and there's Isaac. But now you've got to put Amos to this list, don't you? Yep, I do. Oh, my gosh. So, so you thought you just had four people who are 1812, <laughs> and now you've got more to work with. Good for you. What, was, inter you what was interesting is that uh, I still have uh, – my mother's sister is still alive, mm -hmm. and I hadn't heard any – family stories about the War of 1812, so I called her up this evening and uh, and asked her if she knew uh, knew the story about anybody being in the War of 1812, and she said she didn't, but she, I'm going to work at putting together uh, a story and, and some of these images that we are seeing, and we'll get it to her, because... Mm -hmm. uh, I know she will be interested in that. Well, that is cool. When so she's only talking about these are her this this Check name is 
is this her second great grandparents. Okay, and so in that period of time, she, that information did not pass down. So right. kind of interesting, cousin Russ. Yeah, yeah, and I and I was surprised when the pension when the uh, bounty land management record showed out to the Midwest because mm -hmm. I didn't know anybody had been out had property out there and I don't I don't know that anybody w physically went there and I think what you explained tonight was maybe they didn't go they just mm -hmm. had the land grant to get uh, they had the property but they did something with it they didn't actually visit it mm -hmm. they may have just signed it uh, assigned it to the next person for a consideration yes well I think you've done a great job um, trying to identify I mean we've previously seen a web webinar a hangout on air that you did cousin Russ where you explained how you are using Ancestry.com just to look at your tree and just look in a certain collection like the 1812 records. Um, perhaps we can add that later. It's not in our list of links to share. But that's how you zeroed in on this fact. Um, out of you know thousands and thousands of shaky leaf hints you have at Ancestry, um, it's easier for you to do all of 1812, all of Rev War, you know, all of Civil War um, uh, servicemen uh, and patriotic uh, re renderers of patriotic service. And uh, that I mean, how long would it have been before you ever looked to see if any of your Darlington served? I, I don't think you go out that far sometimes. I, I, I would. I would not have looked. Uh, would not have looked uh, because the War of 1812. I have one one person in my tree that I was involved, and that's Francis Scott Key. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so uh, I that's know so he famous. Was yes, that's you so know, famous. You'd have to <laughs> stop there. <laughs> okay. But, but I didn't. I, but I wanted to see who else was there, and I. Uh, got focused on doing military records and mm -hmm. there's, I found some fantastic bits of information uh, and I wanted since we've been talking about the War of 1812 and the mm -hmm. Reserve the Pension Project that I said well maybe I've got some and I found four and actually I found more than four. Wow the, and the you're going to help your aunt etc. Absolutely. Okay now it's getting to be the end of the uh, hangout on air and there's something I'm supposed to do let's see if I can remember what it is Oh yes, dear Myrtle says I should say happy family tree climbing everybody. That's a wrap.